Ladies and gentlemen, has it been a while? Yes, I've been busy. I've had to do that work thing. Um, especially during this time, it's been doing night shifts and it sucked. Anyway, welcome to a new video in which me and you, you and I, the both of us together, are going to build a D&D character. Now, not just make the character sheet in a way that you can use them, but we're actually going to make a character, not just a stat sheet. You follow? So, we're going to be using D&D Beyond because, at least in these current times, a lot of D&D is being done online, for various reasons. And D&D Beyond is a great tool for making online D&D characters, especially if you don't have books. If you have nothing, even better, because there is a finite amount of stuff on there that's free, and I mean, it's free and easy to use, so what else is there to it? Come on, it's easy. So, once you've got yourself an account, literally this, as I've made in previous videos, this account is fresh. I'm not gonna buy anything on this, at least for a while, because I wanna be able to use this for you guys to use as a reference. And so that's what we're gonna do. Uh, the first thing you're gonna do once you're on the actual D&D Beyond homepage is you are going to go to collections, top right, uh, wherever it is on mobile. I'm doing it on PC because that's how I record. Uh, but we go collections, we go characters, and here we're gonna go up here to create a new character. This is the one we made before, uh, with the quick build that took literal seconds. This one is, um, this is how we got to this screen here. And this is the way we're going to build it. We're going to use the standard way of building, which is, takes a bit longer than quick build. Quick build took a couple seconds. Standard takes a bit longer, but it's more in depth. Uh, it does have help text, so if you do get a bit confused, um, it's going to help you out um, with it. Uh, we're just going to leave all this stuff as it is. Leave all this. Um, feats, multicraft requirements. This is all stuff that your DM is going to tell you. You can leave this homepage as it is. Don't worry about it. Now. When it comes to actually making yourself a character, the first thing that you want to have done, have ready to go, is a concept for a character in your head. In your mind, you want a concept for a character. Any old thing will do. Uh, I made one a couple of days ago just because I could, uh, and because I was curious if it would work. A fire dancer, someone who uses um, like in the bow staff, but the each end of the bow staff is on fire, and they're a fire dancer. How oh, can I do that? I went through and I looked at all the stuff that I have access to, and I built it that way. Today, I think we are going to build the dwarven uh, druid that was a town guard uh, that I referenced in my very first D&D uh, video. And so we're gonna use that. Um, the name is going to be, actually, let's go with the, the race first. He's gonna be a dwarf. It's gonna be a, uh, hell dwarfs have higher wisdom, I think. Yeah, wisdom. So because druids use wisdom, hill dwarves get a bonus to their wisdom. Might as well take that. Um, they get a tool proficiency. Anything that you need to select will come up in this little blue here and it'll have the little exclamation point. All the rest of it, dwarven resilience, combat training, stones cunning, that's ready for you to go. There's nothing that you need to select there. So. Anywhere, anywhere that, where you have choice in this sort of format is going to come up with this uh, little blue exclamation point. Um, dwarves, gonna, they get one of three various proficiencies uh, when you become a dwarf, because what are dwarves known for? Digging in holes, uh, making stuff, and drinking. Drinking, digging in holes, and smithing stuff. Um, he was a town guard, probably going to know his way around a drink or two. Now, we know what class he is. He's going to be a druid. So, uh, let's find druid. There we go. Add class. Job done. Technically, we can just press what's next and go from here. But there's a lot of stuff that we want to add. Again, hit points at level one. They're set. So there's nothing for you to select here. The druidic is a language that you get. So there's nothing for you to, to select. The proficiencies, however, you get choice in those. So, obviously, the little blue outline with the blue exclamation point. That's it. Technically, it's a white exclamation point bordered with blue, but you know what I mean. Uh, druid skills, this guy is, he was a town guard. What's a town guard? Probably insight and perception. Thinking about it, makes sense. He needs to know if people are lying and he needs to be on the lookout. 
those that's what those two skills are good for easy now spells druids get a couple of spells that they can prepare um at level one they get a couple cantrips two and our druid we want one the way that i tend to go about creating uh picking out spells is one offensive spell and one utility spell for your cantrips um, you want at least one damaging one and at least one utility one if you have an option for more great uh, go nuts pick whatever you want but we're gonna go with shillelagh uh, just because I know what it does um, it makes it easier for me but basically he walks around with the club that club then becomes a d8 weapon that he can use it's kind of like a cudgel a cudgel a baton a baton a baton yeah um, and it turns the weapon from a d4 to d8 one better than, big, one's bigger d4 d8 d8 is bigger than d4 um, and it's magic and you can use wisdom to hit it instead of strength or dexterity so we don't need to worry necessarily about strength or dexterity haha -ha. love it when a plan comes together now a utility spell thinking about what would a so if first of all what I'm about to do is I'm about to press one of these this is going to give me only cantrips and if I wanted to uh, give me only first level spells I can press it here if I want both I can press both anyway back to cantrips thinking about it what is going to be a good cantrip these things here for uh time guard guidance really really good a lot of people don't like it but out of combat maybe even in combat a free extra d4 free one of these onto your skill check stop looking at my face look at the thing of whatever d4 now a lot of people i've seen rate guidance really terribly I'm not sure why, because to get a free bonus, even if it's just a, like a two, that's basically a plus two increase to your stat, which is really good. <laughs> it's really good. I recommend it. Use it all the time. It's an action, it's free to use, and it gives you buffs. Utility. It's good. So, we've given ourselves one offensive and one utility. Job done. Now we have uh, first level spells. Uh, we'll come back to actual spells because these are modified by our wisdom later on. So when it comes to actual prepare spells, we'll come back in a minute because we've got ability scores. Now we're going to use a standard array for this uh, just because it's easier to do and it gives us the option of 15, 14, 13, 12, 10 and 8. But if we wanted to, we have the option to manually put in our scores and to use point by. Now point by is really complicated but it breaks it down in that you have 27 points and you can spend various amounts of points to increase your skills by various amounts. Easy enough. Uh, this adds, if you wanted to, you could make f uh, the standard array out of point by, but what's the point? Just use standard array, it's easier. Um, so our druid is wise. He's a, he's a wise old man. There we are. So we're gonna put a 15 on wisdom because he's a wise old man. He's wise, he knows what he's doing. He's been on the job for a long time. He's seen a lot of tricks and he knows what people are trying to get away with. He's probably not charismatic, most. It's probably gonna be like, I don't care about these ruffians, I just want the job done. That sort of thing. Um, he's gonna be hardy, big hardy boy. Um, dexterous, mm, maybe. Look at the 12 dexterity. Smart, he doesn't need to be smart, and he's probably a bit on the stronger side. There we go, that's his stats done. Just thinking about what this sort of character is going to be like allows us to influence, one, with where the stats come from. So, if you're a druid, having wisdom is probably a good thing, so maybe put it that way, and then figure out a reason why they would be so wise. I mean, in this case, being a town guard, he's probably been on the job for a while and seen lots of things, and so you learn from those things, and those things are then, uh, they translate to being slightly wiser, and he's also a druid, and they work together. Brilliant. Now that we've got our stats sorted out, let's go back to spells. Because we can add, suddenly, a couple more spells. Jumped from one to four. Wow. A four. Three? Four times as many? 300% increase? I'm not sure. I'm not maths. My intelligence am 8. So for actual first level spells. Again, one utility, one damage, whatever else you want from there. So for damage, this guy's probably up close. We gave him Shillelagh. 
because he's going to be up close and hitting people with a cudgel or a club or something. Either you can go with fairy fire, which is going to a massive 20 foot cubic, 20 foot cubic area that's going to be lit up uh, with this fairy fire. And it's going to make people easier to head over the head with your cudgel if they don't make their save. Pretty good idea. Uh, you have entangle, stop people running away, or make it harder for them to run away down places like alleyways. Bam, there you go. Good idea, let's get this one, and let's get this one. Now, the thing about druids, compared to, say, bards, is at the start of each day, they can repick their spells from their entire list. So it doesn't necessarily matter, because um, you can always change them the next day. But we're also going to go with... Uh, Cure Wounds, because if you can heal, unless you're playing into a character that doesn't heal for a reason, why not take it? It's, it's pretty good. So now we have a healing spell, a couple of uh, utility spells. Now what about a damage spell? Well, there's a few ways we can go about doing this. We can either go for Absorb Elements. This is kind of... To say situational is putting it lightly, uh, especially in the early levels when fire and acid damage isn't really that common. Uh, maybe a bit of a waste early on, but what it allows you to do is take less damage from the element that caused you to use the spell and then be able to deal that damage back. So later on, it can be pretty cool, but early on. Yeah. Um, then we have Ice Knife. This is pretty cool. You can throw a, uh, an Ice Knife to someone and then it will explode into shards from that area potentially dealing quite a bit of damage alternatively thunder wave a big woof. 15 foot area around you 15 foot cube so three squares out if you're using a battle map and then all the way around get a chance to just push people away from you if you're getting overwhelmed as someone on the front line might be doing it's probably a good idea because anyone that fails their strength save gets pushed away Thunderwave, good idea. Um, and so we're gonna take it because our druid's probably gonna be in those situations more often than not, considering what we have described. He has his abilities and now his description. We can select a portrait from various dwarven icons because D&D Beyond now knows that we're a dwarf and it's gonna give us all the dwarven icons first and then all the other portraits in case we don't like any afterwards. Uh, let's go with that, that's pretty cool. Job done, there we go. And his name is, one, two, ooh, I like that name. My name's Mysteria Fireforge. Pleasure to meet you. Job done. Does it sound like a woman's name to you, does it? That's a traditional dwarven name. Thank you very much. <laughs> and so comes the background. Not a great deal here, but there are two options that we could choose. There's either the folk hero or the soldier, depending on what kind of uh, town guard this guy may have been in the past. The folk hero is the sort of the guy who is reveled amongst everyone, say at a bar. If you were to go to a bar as this um, as this town guard, people would just sort of naturally break up the fights and be like, "Oh, look." This is the good. This is the good cop. This is the good town guard. We got to respect him because he respects us. That sort of background. Or we can go for the soldier and be the guy who's sort of more. He says it right there, intimidating, and comes in and just rips people apart. So, right, that's enough. You out of the bar. You out of the bar. Depending on what way you want to go with it. Considering this guy's got a low charisma, the soldier's probably more towards where he's going. Uh, and then we get a game set. This is literally just flavor. Um, <laughs> in my many years of playing uh, 5e, I have never once <laughs> used any of these. If your dungeon master does, amazing. But I've never had players really want to play it either as a DM. So uh, at this point, it's more flavor. And if you do end up using it, great. Oh my god, I've never used it before. Uh, but I like to go with the dice set. Why not? And it gives you a feature. Uh, you have. Um, authority. So say if he was a town guard captain, he would have a bit of influence over the everyone beneath him. And you could use those uh, people to maybe help you out with some things. Now, 
suggested characteristics. These are what really build out a character. Personality traits, choose two. Um, these things are sort of the outward appearance of um, this character. So, for instance, you can stare down a hellhound without flinching. You know what? That kind of seems right for this guy. He's fed up with being a town guard, and if a hellhound would uh, um, hunt him down, he'd be like, I'm two days from retirement. I know how this goes. And so he probably wouldn't flinch. He'd be all for it. What other thing? He enjoys being, he's not massively strong, probably a crude sense of humor. These things make sense. And they work there. You don't have to necessarily stick to these things, but they're good. Guidelines for your character. They just sort of keep you in line with where you wanted the character to initially be. And if you don't like any of these, you can make a custom background using the features of all of the ones that you have available. Um, so if you wanted the feature of the folk hero, but the personality traits of the soldier, you can do that with the custom background. Personality traits, well, yeah, ideals. Responsibility, he doesn't really obey authority. Live and let live, ideals aren't worth killing over or going to war for. This kind of seems like where he's at. From what I'm, I'm sort of getting the feel for for this guy, um, live and let live. If you're not breaking my laws in my town, you can do what you like. All right, and if I find you down some dirty back alley, getting in the fist fight, you've been good to me, I'll be good to you. It kinda seems like where he's going to. So, he's gonna be a more neutral character, as perhaps someone in a position of law, or like a town guard may end up being. Now the bonds, the bonds are what makes your character put one foot in front of the other day after day? And a lot of these things are, he fights for those who can't fight for themselves. That very much seems like this dwarven guy. Rough, gritty, he doesn't really care about a lot of other people. But he does his job because he knows that if he didn't, there'd be more people out there who are at risk. And that's why he does it. He's a neutral character, but maybe he's a neutral good character because there are two sides to this. <laughs> Neutral and good. He doesn't care about law, but he just wants to protect people who can't fight for themselves. That's why he became this uh, town guard. It makes sense. And then finally, the flaws. There is no really good character that didn't have a flaw. Flaws are what make the and, and define a good character. Having good flaws and playing to them makes your character memorable. At least in my opinion. He obeys the law, even if the law causes misery, because he is an enforcer of the law, and to disobey the law would be to disobey himself. It's not that he cares for the law, it's just his job, and so he has to do it. Alternatively, maybe he's really stubborn, and doesn't like admitting that he's wrong. He knows this law. I've been enforcing this law for 20 years. What do you mean the law? No, the law has not changed. And he's not going to admit that he's wrong. How dare you assume that I'm wrong? I've been in this job for 20 years. There are lots of ways that you could play this guy. And it's all, all of these are just to give you some pointers as to where you might want to put this, direct this character. Now you can get into personality sort of traits and physical characteristics later on. Uh, this guy was going to be uh, neutral good. There we go. Neutral good folks do the best they can to help others according to their needs. Many celestials, some cloud giants, and most gnomes are neutral good. <laughs> Gives you a little sort of indication there. Neutral good, lawful evil, maybe. Yeah, devils, blue dragons, hobgoblins. Not our dwarf friend. So, now that we have our description of our character down, we have a name, we have a an icon for him. Equipment. D&D Beyond makes this super easy. Really, really easy. We go equipment. What are we going to have? Well, this dwarf's probably going to get hit upside the head a lot. He's probably going to want a shield. And we'll go with a simple weapon because he's going to have a club. It's going to beat people over the head and he's going to use shillelagh on it. Job done. He also gets some leather armor as standard. An explorer's pack, a druidic focus which we get to choose what our druidic focus is going to be. This is what we need to hold on to or have available to us when we cast our spells. 
So it could be a sprig of mistletoe, an act, uh, a totem that he's got around his neck. I feel like that's a good idea. He's got a little totem um, just around his neck and he just clutches onto that whenever he needs to cast a spell. Um, and then for being a soldier, you can have any one of these things. Uh, what did we say his... Um, he's got a dice set for his background. So he's going to have a dice set. So a bone dice. There we go. It all works together. So wooden shield, simple weapon being a club. We're going to have a totem. And then for the starting equipment, realistically, what is this guy going to have? This here is meant to sort of guide where the back's ground came from. So a broken blade could be from a warlord that he helped to take down that was in the city. Same with a banner. He may have partaken in a war at one point and then retired from soldier life to be a town guard. And he has a banner to remember that by. We're going to go with a broken blade, but the options are there for you to choose. Then you get some clothes and a bit of cash to start yourself off with. What's next? We view our character sheet. There we go. He's ready to go. Uh, we probably want to go over to this equipment tab here and give him the stuff so that he's not completely weak. But realistically, he's probably going to be hitting people upside the head. Ready to go. Bam! But here he is. He's ready to go. He's got his insight. He's got his perception up there because he, this is his job. He does this all the time. He's very proficient in it. He's only got 25 walk speed, though. Because he's a dwarf. But this has been how to make a character on D&D Beyond. Not just make a stat sheet. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, don't forget to give it a like, share it to someone who you think might find this helpful as well. And until next time, have fun playing D&D. And ultimately, did you know I'm English? Cheerio.